Hello viewers, and as you may have noticed, I'm dressed as Mulan because today I'm going to be telling you the story of Mulan's life. It all started when Mulan was eating rice, with chopsticks of course, and taking notes, like this, on her hand, when suddenly, cock a doo 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 the hen called, and then she said, ah yeah, and got to jump off her bed and look for her little dog little brother. That was his name. He was so cute and looked like this. <laughs> and cleverly she tied a bow at the edge of a stick so the dog could run after it. And a packet of hen food on the other side. And there was a hole in the packet too. So every time the dog runs, the food would come out. could eat. And Mulan gave his father, I mean her father, a cup of tea, who said that you're supposed to be downtown getting ready. She said that I'll bring the family honor, do not worry. And then she went down, and then she went downtown, and she was looking so beautiful when she was ready, like so beautiful. You just and next, she could not bring her family honor. So sadly, sang the song. And next, she, and next, she sadly spoke to her father. Sadly, when suddenly the drums banged. Ding, 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 ding. And the soldiers came and said that each boy from every family will have to join the army because the Huns had came. The Huns were evil. And next, and next, Mulan tried to stop her father from joining, from joining the army, but it did not work. Her father already got the letter, letter like a paper, like written something or something. Which he got, he took it, which means that he is going to join the army. So. Mulan watched her father train with his sword and saw that he could not do it and she understood that if her father had joined the army he would die so she decided to take her father's place like disguising herself as a man and she cut her hair and did it in a high button like this just a little higher okay next she put on the costume of her father and took the sword, even the letter. So everybody understands that she is the one who's supposed to join the army. And next, she escaped with her horse. Okay. And in the morning she arrived. The ancestors had helped her. The ancestors had sent a dragon, but when Mulan saw the little dragon Mushu, she thought that the ancestors had sent a <laughs> that moment was so funny. Not too funny. And she was feeling shy to go and speak to the other boys. But Mushu had taught her how to be a man. And she was not feeling that much shy anymore. And next, at her first training, second, third, she failed and failed and failed. And the trainer was getting angrier and angrier. And then the trainer had said, go home, because she could not do it, and time was wasting. Before she went, she tried to climb up the huge and tall log to reach the arrow, and with two heavy things on her arm. She thought that she could use it like this, tied it, and she was climbing and climbing. And when she reached the top, she could stay. She could train more, and then she was better than the trainer at fighting. And when the time had finally came to fight, to fight, they saw that the Huns were coming. They they shoot at the cannons, but there was only one more cannon left. Shang Yu was their were the Huns' leader, and they tried to target it 
at Shang Yu, but Mulan knew that it would not work, and that was the last cannon. Can you guys believe it? The last cannon. And they had to win this fight. So Mulan quickly grabbed the cannon before it's too late and targeted it at the mountain so it, would, so it could fall on the Huns and they would die. But they were still alive. After they found out that Mulan was a woman, they left her alone. At least Mushu was still there with his little friend, the cricket, sometimes. But it's cute. And next, she tried to warn everybody that the Huns were still alive. But at the end, she finally got caught their attention and then she fought it for China. But the most funniest and <laughs> funny, funny part in this story is that the boys, like the ones who trained, they dressed up as women, so stylish. <laughs> and Mulan was already a woman. And next, they fight it. Well, I don't know why they dressed up like that, but the gates were locked. The emperor is in great danger. What could they do? They dressed up as women and climbed up. Then the trainer finally understood Mulan's plan and then she and then he joined with Mulan's plan because all the gates were locked. What did he do? He just joined Mulan's plan and then they made it and saved the emperor. But mostly Mulan did it. And she saved China and even the emperor bowed to her, which was a part I could not believe. What? What? But the emperor also said that she destroyed his palace but also saved their lives and that's why he was really thankful to Mulan. Then Mulan returned with the emperor's necklace and sword as gifts and everybody in her family was happy. So this was the story of Mulan's life. Well, I know that this is not actually a story but already a movie but there's a moral because Mulan lied and lied and lied and the moral is that if you lie that nobody would listen to you because it might be a lie again, right? And you would have done the same thing, right? And remember this moral because it's so important. Goodbye, everybody.